Hey everyone, uh, this video, I just want to go over sort of an update on some of the finalization of the cases um, as far as printing uh, and whatnot. So uh, this is a, obviously a different case than my previous videos um, and it's not even a completely designed case. I just wanted to pull up a case, uh, quickly went through it and then um, I want to show you how I now, we can now label our models, uh, hollow them, get them print ready. So anyway, um, there's been a lot of updates and this is where most of them, you know, uh, take place. So first thing we want to do, I want to look up to tools, go to preferences and make sure we're in the orthodontics panel. Okay. You're going to notice down here, there's now hollow models, generate steps as a hollow model. I had that checked. You can uncheck, generate cross pattern, check, uncheck. Now I'll show you in a little bit what the cross pattern looks like, but a quick description. The hollow models means that the model is printed as a shell, essentially. The underside is hollowed out. This saves a significant amount of resin. Um, also can save print time on laser style printers or even FDM printers. Uh, the cross pattern creates some structural integrity to that hollowed out area, um, giving it some reinforcement. You could say it wastes resin, but it also makes it stronger. It makes it stronger, it's less likely to break, but also if you decide to mount these models on an articulator, uh, this cross arch will uh, lock onto the stone more easily. Uh, the the uh, thickness that I have it set at is three millimeters. Um, I've seen people go as low as two millimeters, two and a half millimeters, and then as high as about 3.2 or 3.5. It depends on what the resin you're using. Some resins uh, print faster, but are may maybe not quite as strong. So you might want to up it to the 3.2. Um, but uh, 3.0 has been working well for us. And uh, so I'm going to show you as in that setting. So that's all set. That's going to be the biggest change that you may, you need, may need to activate. If you updated your software, you're going to need to be uh, in this. So quick update, you know, I mean, quick uh, also notification is if you go to help, about we're in version 4.5.9 if you're ever wondering what version you're in that's where you can check okay so now we've got that set one of the things we're going to do is we're going to add a label and in the past we would just click on show label and we would hover over top of the model we're on the maxilla right now so i'm going to hover right over top of here and i'm just going to hit um apply so I'm going to give you a little warning here. It's basically saying that since we have the hollow enabled, if you are to add that to the base of the model, it's going to disappear when the software goes and redoes the base because it has to hollow it out. So your labels will disappear. It's a warning. It's always going to be there. As long as you have the hollow, it's going to ask you that. Just click OK every single time. So long as, again, you're not putting it on the base. OK, it should be done in just a second. Um, so this is the typical way we add our, our labels. Um, sometimes we will also opt to um, delete the name and show the label and put a number over top of the last tooth. Not everyone does this. I used to do it. I don't really do it anymore. The reason to do this is when, when you make your suck down your, your tray, it's going to suck down around that number, essentially creating a number in your tray. It will look similar to a button or feel like a button to the patient. You're not going to add any composite in there. It's just going to be in uh, setting out of the tooth so that you can always look at the tray and, and readily identify it. So I used to do this. I don't personally do this right now. Um, you know, I just kind of stopped. I don't even know why, but we haven't had issues without doing it, but it's, it's not a bad idea to do just as a, um, as a default. So those are the typical ways. You can see how the text sticks out. It's fine. It works. It's been working for us for a long time. Um, but I'm going to show you how you can also do it is to click on engrave. Show, sorry, show the label. And now I'm going to, instead of embossing it where it sticks out, I'm going to engrave it. So it's going to, the, the text is going to appear as a negative, if you will, an indent in the model. Um, this is, uh, advantageous for, um, sorry, um, this is nice. One of the things that I like about this is that, uh, when you're making your trays, when you're cutting the, tr the plastic off the models, your, uh, saw or whatever, isn't going to be hitting that or the plastic won't get snagged on it. It will go right over top. It will not get into these grooves. So, um, you know, it won't, uh, it won't get lodged in there. It won't get stuck in there. But, uh, if you, if you think you're going to try to somehow use that to your advantage, don't expect the, it to get in there. 
And you definitely don't want to engrave the tooth number here because obviously we don't want the tray sticking, even if it could capture that, which it won't. We don't want that sticking into the tooth because that means you'd have to cut that space out in the tooth. Again, that's not gonna work. Don't worry about it. It's just the, for general labeling of the models, I like to engrave and you'll see here what that looks like. It does take a little bit longer to engrave rather than to emboss uh, as far as the software going goes. But um, yeah. so here we go. You can see that it sticks into the model. Okay. I do prefer this. Okay, so now we're done labeling it, and I've labeled it twice just for demonstration. I wouldn't honestly do that normally. Now I'm going to uh, add a print platform. To do so, I'm just gonna right click, click Add Platform, and there it is, it's attached. Now, we do have to do a couple little checks here. First of all, typically speaking, it will just be in contact. It needs to be more flush. Future updates will probably have it actually shoved forward a little more. But until that time comes, just plan on grabbing the model and sliding it forward. You can also use the little arrows to move it forward and back, but I just tend to grab it and drag it up. So now we know the model, the heels are well embedded. I'm going to use these little circles to scale it bigger or smaller, just enough so that it's fully supporting the model or the heel of the model. There we go. I mean, you don't have to be perfect here. The heels back here, I can say, okay, let's, we don't need to extend that much. That's fine. This little bit sticking out here is going to be no problem. Um, you can be picky if you want. If you need to, you can also grab this and make it taller. It allows you to embed more of the model in it if you have really uneven heels of your models. So uh, if you've done a good job and had a good broad platform of the heels, you're fine. But if you need to, that is a way to give yourself a thicker platform for um, to, to compensate for that. I'm going to turn off the opposing. That's not helping us. And then lastly, I'm just going to extrude this back. Okay, or, or sorry, bring it back in. So this is all good. So one thing to bear in mind, and this is something that you should actually can kind of consider at the very beginning. After you've embedded it, the first thing you should do after that is actually to check whether you need to angle the platform back or, or whatnot. Usually you mean back, okay? I'm gonna hit Control Z. There are two reasons I do that. If I'm missing a posterior tooth, I will angle it back because the distal marginal ridge, if we were missing this molar, the distal marginal ridge of this premolar might be hanging back, causing like an essentially representing an overhang. I don't want that. Or if we go all the way back on this case, you'll see that he's actually got a central incisor that's in crossbite and it's quite lingual. So in that case, this surface might be almost leaning back. If it is, then I might want to take this and tilt it back to compensate a bit, okay? Some people will say 20 degrees or whatever degrees. I don't think there is a set number of degrees you need because it just depends on the case. You tip it back until you know you don't have an overhang. Um, so I'm gonna do that and now because I did that, these are sticking out a little bit, probably not a big deal, but I can go ahead and get rid of that. Truth is, is I just don't wanna, I wanna make sure that I'm not sticking out past this part for conserving resin, but anyway, so let's go ahead and export these and look what, see what they look like in the print plant, the printing software. I'm going to go ahead and click export. I'm just going to make a new folder, uh, models test. We're just going to say hollow models, and I'm going to go ahead and pause this recording. Okay, so now it is done ex exporting. I, I just paused the video because I won't, you know, it does take a little while and no reason for you to have to sit there and watch that. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Rayware, uh, which is um, the software for the Moonray and uh, whatnot, the Sprint Ray printers. So uh, you know, it's going to work very similarly on the um, any other printing software that you're using. Okay, and Hollow Models. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag all of these in here. Give it a second for it to import them all. And then we're going to get, get an opportunity to see what these hollowed and cross arched, whatever cross membered uh, models look like. For reference, I don't usually export all of them. I usually only print about um, anywhere from two to four models at a time, case dependent. Uh, we Point being, we do not do the whole case. Sorry, all right. Click on this model.
and all I'm doing is I'm clicking on the base to uh, make it perpendicular or make it snap to the build plate and then click on this one that little red means it's sticking outside the build platform not a big deal I'm gonna click on this I'm gonna rotate to rotate it easily I'm just gonna hold the shift button it goes click click perfect click click drag it over there click Right. Oops. Okay. All right. So this is what they look like underneath. You can see they're all it's hollow and it has this three millimeter. I mean, obviously it's the same thickness as the actual uh, model itself. And these are there to help support it, make it. Uh, well, I said, keep it strong, but also keep it uh, mountable as your stone will lock onto that. And so there we go. We're all ready to print per, uh, uh, vertically. Notice that, at least in this software and many others, you want to look at the bottom because this is the very first layer. Uh, you want to make sure you see this big solid thing. That means it's perpendicular. It's going to print well. So anyway, I uh, hope this video was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much.